All right. In this section, we will look at skills. What skills do managers need? Recall in the first lecture, we learned that there are three levels of management, lower, middle, and top management. In this diagram, we see that skills that managers need can be broadly classified into three categories, conceptual, human, and technical. Notice the shaded region of the three skills vary across the three levels of management. Starting from the left, conceptual skills are more important for top level management. In the middle, human skills seem to be equally important across all three levels of management. And on the right, technical skills are more important for lower level management. We'll start off with technical skills. These are skills that are specialized, like you need to put in special effort and time to learn. Let me give you an example. Say a McDonald's branch manager should be able to know how to assemble a Big Mac meal in under one minute. I mean, can you do that? Do you know which sauce to use? How long do you fry the patty? Do you put the cheese on the top or the bottom? Like how do you wrap the burger so nicely? You gotta spend time to learn these things. Well, my favorite McDonald's item is the McFlurry. I love it so much. I eat it like so much. I mean, I shouldn't, it's not good for my weight. But you know, I don't know how to make McFlurry. Like I don't know how to operate the machine, I don't know what is the what goes into the ingredients of the McFlurry. I know probably there's milk, there's sugar, but then how can milk and sugar become so tasty and so nice? Well, these are technical skills for you. Technical skill is the ability to use procedures, techniques, expertise, and knowledge of a specialized field. So first line managers, as well as probably middle managers, are heavily involved in technical aspects. Very important to note is that such skill become less important as they move on to higher levels of management. More examples of technical skills, such as performing surgery, like a doctor or carpentry. Some food for thought. Do you think the CEO of, say, a big giant hospital knows how to perform wisdom tooth extraction surgery like that's a very technical work that probably only surgeons know the ceo of the hospital which is the boss of the surgeon probably wouldn't know exactly how you perform a complicated technical surgery like that moving on we have human skill Human skill is defined as the ability to work with, understand, and motivate people as individuals or groups. How many of you here have very good people skill? Like, for example, you have many friends, you are super popular, you love hanging out with many people. If that's you, you probably have high human skill. And that, in life, is a very important skill to have. Over the next three years in Nanyang Polytechnic, you should probably try to work on improving your human skill before you step out into the working world. Such a skill is crucial as managers because you manage people. And this skill is important, be it you are in the top management level or the middle or the lower managers. So basically, people with good human skill tend to make good managers generally. The third type of skill is conceptual skill. That's the ability to comprehend abstract or general ideas and apply them to specific situation. It basically means you having the ability to see the big picture, to view things as a whole, and able to make effective decisions. 
Now, these skill is very important specifically for top management positions. People right at the top has to make decisions and has to consider the organization as a whole picture. To help you understand this better, here's an example. So you might know this story of the frog in the well. This frog, you see, got stuck in the well for a long time. I don't know, maybe he just jump and just fall inside. We'll never know. So after being stuck for a long time, the thing is he survives because inside the well, there's water and insects. He probably has no problem staying alive. Now, the problem is the only thing he sees is this small little hole at the top. Like that's all he sees. His world is a small blue circle. That's his view. He's not wrong. That is all he sees in his circumstances, or probably in his ability. But of course we know the world is not just a small circle. The world is, okay, a big circle. All right, I think you know what I mean. We can discuss more examples of this during your tutorials. So here's more examples. Say, for example, writing monthly report, like um, accounting report, uh, HR report, or marketing report. What skills do you need of the three? Probably technical. You need to know what's going on in order to be able to write a report well. Next, we have negotiating with union. I'm not sure if you have any experience or understanding with unions. Basically, there are groups of people, so you kind of need more human skills. Counseling? No brainer. Who do you counsel? Human. Drafting annual work plan? Well, that's annual on a basis. It seems more to me conceptual because you need to know like what's going to happen for the whole year. Interview stuff? Mm, it's kind of tricky like probably you need some technical skills to interview people but i would say maybe it's more human because you have to understand the person better you can discuss this more during your class your tutorials number six creating company new policy in this case the new policy will apply to everybody in the company it's kind of big quite massive so I would think probably more conceptual. And lastly, number seven, conduct training for staff. Well, you need to be able to know what to conduct, like the technical skills, right? But then you also need to be able to make sure everybody understands you. So for this case, probably it's a mixture of technical and human. Yeah, these are up for discussion. You can feel free to bring this up during tutorials and we'll see which skills could it fall in or could it be a mixture of both. All right, this is the end of this section. Click to move on to the next section.